if you'll join me in prayer for him. So let's do it corporately, and, and you can do it individually as well, okay? Heavenly Father, we lift Pastor Thomas up before you, and we ask that you intervene and give him the strength. Touch his body that this little virus that's got a hold of him will go away. Lord Jesus, we trust in you, and we know there's power in your name. Nothing can come against you and prosper or defeat the power of your blood. Amen. Amen. So, everybody has the outline. And the reason I asked everybody to come together, I'm old school, I'm a retired Los Angeles deputy sheriff, and I was the team leader for the law enforcement operatives, the first counter-terrorist team in U.S. history, and the only one. There was 12 of us on that team, I was the agent in charge. 47 missions, we never failed one. I learned to trust my brothers in life and death, abroad and at home. And the most important thing I learned, as Christian men, we need to act like men. We need to come together as brothers. Doesn't matter the color or anything. More than anything else, we're children of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And in that alone, we stand together, just like we stood for the flag and the Constitution. As Christians, we stand for the blood of Jesus Christ and the gospel. Because there's no hope for this nation other than men like you getting together. I travel a lot. This church is my home when I'm here. Everywhere I go and speak, I speak of the 412 men's group. Because when I can't attend, I'm refreshed. I'm tired, I'm beat. And I come here and I see you brothers. It refreshes me to go out and continue. So God bless you. Stay strong. Keep your fellowship going. Now earlier when I said we need to act like men, doesn't matter what age, sometimes we act like little children or boys. We don't want to talk about issues. We don't want to talk about secrets. We don't want to talk about things that we don't want to talk about. We act like children. But what I've learned, if you want to defeat the enemy, you know the weaknesses of your brother. You know the strengths of your brother. And you trust your brothers, you can bring them to anything and say, stand with me against what I'm facing. And the men of God will. And there's a lot of men of God in this church. They'll stand you because they're warriors. They literally stand with the body of armor of Jesus Christ and battle with you. So one of the uncomfortable things we're going to talk about tonight is pornography. It is something that's gripping this nation. It is the highest grossing business in America. It's illegal to make, but they can show it. But it's made here in America and it's shown here. And what I found is talking in prisons, fire departments, military bases, and just guys getting together and us being honest, we talk about it, it's in the church. It just is. The devil will destroy us, come after us anyway. So, um, again, I like everybody participating. My team participated in everything. They knew what I was doing. They knew what their teammates were doing. Everybody knew what we were doing. So tonight, I'm just going to just ask you guys to participate and read the scriptures we have before us. Um, can someone read uh, Matthew 5, 27 and 28? What's so precious about this, it's not a condemnation from Christ, it's a reality. Because all sin starts as a matter of the heart. Right? When the devil wants to attack us men, what does he come at through? Our senses. It comes through our eyes, our brain, our ears. You know, pornography has a way of gripping. And I can talk about this because I, I, I'm a sinner redeemed, but I battle lust. I battle alcohol. I was an adulterer. I was a cop. I, was all, I, I, I fought. I drank to kill the pain. I made excuses. But until an elder came and set me down and said, let's be honest. And I, I've carried that with me the rest of my life. This right here, this Bible, this is a road map for us men. It tells us how to be men. It tells us how to be warriors. It tells us how to repent. 
It tells us how to know our own heart and the fact that God wants us to look at our hearts. He already knows what we're doing. There's nothing we can do in secret. Nothing. Psalm. I mean, there's so many Bible scriptures in here that says God looks at the man's heart. The Holy Spirit goes to and fro across the earth to search the heart of a man. Right? Scripture after scripture after scripture. So these little secrets that men have, these little lusts when they look at a woman, you know, like what guys have done. It's sin. If you think about laying with them, if, if we as men act like men and go, all right, let's identify sin in our own lives. That's what a man does. A man goes, this is my sins. God, I have nothing from you. Nothing whatsoever. And let me tell you, the first time I saw pornography, I was a kid. I was 11 years old. Our babysitter had a, a play, Playboy magazine or something like that. We're looking, and it's like, wow. I felt sin trying to take over my heart at 11 years old. And it was there. When I got older, I got in high school. Hey, you know, sin had planted a seed, and I didn't crush it. Didn't crush it. I became an adulterer. And my shame was before God, my wife was dying of cancer. I had no excuses. I was the most pitiful among men for what I did. But that lie, that sin led to other sins. When my family said, where are you? I'm working overtime. I'm on a case. I worked undercover dope. Had to travel. That one sin led to another sin, which led to another sin. What led to me drinking to try to hide the pain from my sin, my sin, my sin. It's amazing how what we think are secrets, God's just sitting there going, wow, he doesn't get it. And sometimes we don't. But by the mercy and grace of God and his word, talking to brothers that have been through it, we have hope. You know, um, what other things, just as a group, and let's just talk as men openly, this is a safe place. You'll never have a safer place in the church than with your brothers. You just won't. Because we can talk about anything openly. We can ask for prayer. We can ask for deliverance. We can ask for strength. We can ask for help. Because that's what brothers, men of God do. King David, his mighty men. Does anybody know how many mighty men he had? Sixteen. Sixteen mighty men. He could count on these guys for anything. Anything. There's no secret he had from them, and there's nothing that was hidden, because he trusted them. And that's what our fellowship should be like. So, speaking of sins, just any sin, and, and let's talk about it, is there sins that can lead to another sin other than pornography? You know, the lying, the, the booze, Anybody think of any other sin that just begots another sin? Yeah. What? What? Anger. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? Yeah. In, in, in fact, Isaiah, one of the uh, things that God had against Israel was not only the adultery but the drunkenness. I mean, we're no different than Israel, right? That when I look at this, and I read this, and I read the curses and the blessings, and, and I look at what's been done throughout history, I was no different. I was looking at myself in the words. It was me. God was saying, turn to me. I'll rescue you. I'll heal you. I'll save you. So, so the, the drinking, the anger, anybody lies. think? Lies? Yeah, yeah, lions. With, whew, and God hates lions. The destruction that sin does, and that's one of the selfish things of sin. And I broke my wife's heart. I broke my family's heart because I lied about it. I did not have my freedom until I confessed to my family everything, and I was free. You want to break the devil's back? Confess your sins to a brother. And don't turn away from it. Just turn away from it. So, um, can someone go ahead and read uh, 
Psalm 40, 12 through 13. And then someone else look up Psalm 51, 10 through 11. Okay, let's read uh, Psalm 40, 12 through 13 first. I have that. Okay, sir, please. Okay. Uh, Psalm 40, 4 through... No, 40, 12 through 13. Okay, Psalm 40, 12 through... 13, yes. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. <coughs> Does anybody know who wrote this? I know it's a simple question. David. King David. The adulterer, the murderer, the liar. Right? Does, any, does everybody know what the word iniquity means? Iniquity? Yes. Um, Sir, you know what it means? Well, sin. Uh, it's it, translated from Hebrew. It's like immoral behavior. Right? And King David recognized that. And what I love about the story about King David, when the prophet came and said, it's you, you know the amazing thing about that? He was king. You can never, I don't care who you are, you can never come against the king. All he had to do was raise that staff. Prophet was dead. He could have hid his shame even more. But he knew that was a man of God that confronted him. He said, this is your sin. And this is the prayer David said. And it's amazing. God heard his prayer. We've seen his word. He heard his prayer. He had to live with the, the complications of his sin. But he was forgiven. He battled his sin because of his son. All the sins. It has consequences. But there's redemption. The forgiveness. The restoration. You know, it just to cry out to God. He knew David's heart, and he cried out, Heal my heart. Because that's where it all started with David. It was on a rooftop. He looked down. Saw her bathing. You know? And you know the devil's right there going, She's pretty cool, huh? And that's that conversation. The devil does that. You just stomp your foot. Treat him like a wild dog. Get out of here. Just leave right now. I don't need this. You just, we just don't. Uh... Can someone go ahead and read Psalm 51, 10 and 11? I got that one. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. What a beautiful prayer from the heart of a sin, sinful man. <laughs> and God responded. God will respond every time when we humble ourselves before him. Open up our hearts because he already knows it and ask for mercy. Ask, ask for peace. Ask for reunion with him. This is before the blood of Christ. They sacrificed lambs to cover the sin. If you read the Bible, they sacrificed them to cover the sin. But Christ washes away our sin. That was the difference. Right? Our sins are washed away, forgiven, forgotten. That's the mercy and grace of God. That he sent his son not to cover our sins anymore like King David, but to wash them away. They're not remembered. Right? So that battle's within us. It's not with God. It's with us. That's why fellowship with God in his word and with each other is so important. Because when you struggle, who can you depend on? God will never fail you. Holy Spirit will never fail you. And you have brothers here that will never fail you. The Word of God is so vitally important and have an understanding of these things. Not, not only do we have an understanding of sin, but we have an understanding of the grace of God. Because you have to have this grace of God or sin will never be defeated. It won't. Because God will renew our heart. He will renew our mind. He will renew our spirit. That's my testimony. It was King David's testimony. Yeah, brother. Yeah, I was going to say, this is, uh, I think, on topic and a little off, but, you know, Instagram, you get these gals sending you yeah. requests. And my brother just said, you got to block them, which I'd already done. I start blocking because they're like, hi, how are you doing today? You know, that I just want to, you know, 
And I knew this, this is a hook, you know, it's pretty, you gotta be pretty stupid not to see. It's probably some, you know, guy in India or something sending pictures. And, but um, it's the temptation and it's there and, you know, um, that happened to me and I, luckily I blocked it, but a brother said, you gotta block it. And, you know, it's that, hearing that in my mind, you gotta block as soon as you go, the temptation to bite into it, block, delete. And it was a cr Christian brother who told you that. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it's the devil will try to hook us men any way he can. He just will. I mean, he's standing before the Lord. I know, going, hey, Rick did this, but Jesus, Jesus is going to say, hey, he repented. He asked for forgiveness. You know. So once you know how the enemy works, like when I work counterterrorism, we studied the Quran. We studied everything. If you know the mindset of the enemy, you can defeat him. Every time. It's the same way with our walk. The devil will come out after us anyway. You look at our America today. I never thought I'd live to see a day like this in America. I grieve for my grandchildren. My boys, I grieve for them. But I grieve on my knees, pleading the blood of Jesus over them. Asking God to send his warring angels to walk with them and protect them. And that was. World War II, they created the oil brass, yeah. baby boomers. And now we created works, and then it just continued to. Yeah. yeah, but you know what? God said, if my people will humble themselves and pray, He'll heal the land. Mm -hmm. We've got to have the voice. Us men have to have the voice. You know, in Isaiah, it talked about the things that God had against Israel. One of them was the women stopped praying, two, the men lived in pride, drunkenness, idolatry. You know, are we that generation? We really have to ask ourselves, guys. Are we that generation? So, as men, let's be men about it. Let's go before God and say, forgive us. Forgive us. Um, I think of Daniel, too, how he was a righteous man, but he said, forgive us. He put himself, he included yeah. himself. None of us can exclude ourselves from this. <laughs> Nobody. So, it's amazing. Can someone go ahead and uh, go to Philippians 4, 8, and 9? And then Pastor Thomas wanted this to be read as well. Someone go to Romans 16, 19, and 20, please. And then whoever goes to Philippians, if you'll read that first, please. I got here. <clears throat> Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if any worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. For me, guys, and I'm just speaking for me, the only thing that I know is good and holy and, and worth pondering on is Jesus Christ. I, I'm in love with Jesus Christ. And I used to travel with this one pastor. and He'd stand up in a restaurant and he'd go, I'm in love with a man. And his name is Jesus Christ. And I can't tell you how many people came to the Lord in those restaurants. It, it was amazing. But our relationship with Jesus Christ should be of love, adoration. When struggles come, who do we turn to? The you know, Holy Spirit's right there. He's just waiting. All right, he is. I, I can't tell you how many times I've faced death. Next time I see you guys, I'll show you. Seven major surgeries, cancer, shot, blown up, shrapnel, all of my body burns. Should have died seven times. God didn't let me. For those, I was a heathen. I deserved death. I deserved it five times over. But I had family praying for me. I had a mother. I had a nine-year-old daughter. You think God doesn't answer our prayers? Doesn't matter. All these people out there doing what they're doing, these transvestites, these transgenders, we can hate them. But Jesus said, don't. If they're thirsty, give them a glass of water. If they're hungry, feed them. Can't be hate in our heart, guys. 
If there's hate in our hearts, we're defeated already. God sees that. All of us were sinners. Sin is sin. Right? But if we're going to defeat sin, we do it with the love of Jesus Christ. We also do it with the fight of Jesus Christ. People don't realize Jesus wasn't a sissy. When he cleared that temple, you think he had any fear in him? They were defiling his father's house, and he stood against it. Stood against it. When they came to get him to face death, he knew his father's plan. At cried, wept, sweat blood. But his words were, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. How many of us as men pray that? Over our nation, over our family, over those we're, we have awed against. How many? He did it for us. If that plan hadn't continued, there'd be no salvation. Christianity is the only religion on earth that offers salvation. Only one. Study them. Christianity, the blood of Jesus Christ, is the only thing that saves man from his sins and reunites him with his maker. The blood of Jesus Christ. Um, can someone read uh, Romans 16, 19, or did we read that? Okay, Pastor Thomas, this is something he really wanted to uh, be read tonight. Okay, brother, go ahead. Yeah, it's amazing. God's saying, just use wisdom. You know that's a sin, <laughs> right? We know what's a sin. You know, I'm looking around the room. None of us are kids, <laughs> right? In the next scripture, you'll see when it talks about wisdom. It's very important for us to use wisdom. Right is right and wrong is wrong. We know that. And the amazing thing is God put that in us when he gave us the spirit, Right? He put it in us. It's just, uh, it's amazing how many opportunities through the word of God, through the blood of Jesus, through his mercies and grace that are never ending, never ending, that we can come and repent of all sins, even pornography, drug, alcohol addiction, lying, stealing, murder, rape. There's no sin that can't be forgiven. And people don't want to talk about it, but we have to. There's people in prison, 25 to life for rape. There's very few of us that go visit them. Very few. Everybody goes, they deserve what they get, kill them. Okay, but they go to hell. It's a tough discussion to have, but that's the reality of it, guys. If they don't get the word of God and have an opportunity to repent, what good are we? How many times did Jesus say, go to the prisons? How many times did he say, feed the poor? We see the Homeless and hungry here. Uh, they're drug addicts. No, they're not. My wife and I feed them all the time. You wouldn't believe some of the stories that are there. It's heartbreaking. We never give them money, but we'll feed them and give them something to drink. So again, God's asking us to use wisdom in all that we do, and especially fight against sins in our own heart. We can't look at someone else, because the Bible is very clear. You know, take the beam out of your own eye before you take the splinter, right? So, all right, this is, to me, one of the most precious scriptures in the Bible. It's John 8, 2 through 11. If someone has that, if you'd read it, please. I got it. Okay, sir. Early in the morning, he came again into the temple and all the people were coming to him. And he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and Pharisees brought a woman caught in adultery, having sent her in the midst. They said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in adultery in the very act. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such woman, women. What then do you say? They were saying this, testing him so that they might have grounds for accusing him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground. But when they persisted in asking him, he straightened up and said to them, 
He who is without sin among you, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and he wrote down on the ground. When they heard it, they began to go out one by one, beginning with the older ones, and he was left alone. And the woman where she was in the midst. Straightening up, Jesus said to her, Woman, where are they? Did no one condemn you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go. From now on, sin no more. This is a... There's three sermons in this scripture alone. It's just amazing. The wisdom of the elders. They left first. The young people full of... Right? They looked and said, Well, the ones that I look at with wisdom left. And then they left. So, us being seasoned guys, these kids are watching us. They're really watching us. How do we act? What's our response to things? Let them, but let's seek the wisdom of God in everything. And why this is so precious to me, I was in the act of sin. I've heard God's voice four times, audibly. And he said, Rick, your sin offends me. I got up and I never went back to that sin, guys, ever. Never went back to that sin and I won't. It was amazing the compassion that Jesus showed this woman. They didn't bring the guy, they brought her. She was caught in the act of adultery. Right? And they were supposed to be, both be stoned. And Jesus knew that. You know, he, he wasn't pondering what I would do. He gave him time to think. I can't speak for it, but, you know, that's what I would think because he's God the Son. He didn't have to ponder on anything. He knew. But to sit there and look at a woman by the law, in the time when Jesus lived, the law still, she should have been stoned. But he knew their hearts, guys. There's nothing God doesn't know. Jesus is God the Son. There's nothing he doesn't know about us. But the same mercy he gave her, the same mercy he gave me when he spoke to me, he gave to all of us. So no matter what the sin is, she was caught in the act. She, was, she, hadn't, she can't deny it. He gave her the mercy and grace. He gave her the mercy and grace. And that's what he has for us. No matter what our addictions are, our sins, if we bring them to him, and we trust him, and he says, go and sin no more, he'll give us the power and the strength of the Holy Spirit not to. But we have to stay before him. We have to stay strong in the word. We have to fellowship with each other. We have to have accountability. We just have to. Because this generation that's bef- below us, the ones below them, the ones below them, they're watching us. They need leadership in the church because the world's going to take them straight to hell. Whether it's in school, college, movies, music, just the things we see here. Be the example. Be that light. You know, we're the lampstand. Jesus is a light. Let me rephrase that. Let Jesus just glow in you. And that happens when we read his word, we pray, we fellowship with him. We confess and we turn from our sins. We have no secrets from him. You know, we think we can fool God. We can't. He sees everything. You know, he just does. And that's one of the hardest things, I think, with men is to confess sin. It really is. Especially secrets. I mean, I lived it. I, I thought I had everybody fooled. I was the only one that was blind. God's not blind. God's not deaf. The people we're hurting are not blind and deaf. So just coming to the Lord. And the, the one that really I want to share with you that this one just, again, like uh, John 8, this one blessed my heart. Can someone read, or if you know it by heart, John three seventeen? the world might be saved through him. There's no condemnation in Jesus Christ. You know, there's the action of confrontation. This is sin. But Jesus didn't come to condemn us. The day when he returns, condemnation will be then. The Bible is very clear on that. He came to save the earth, not to condemn us, but to show us our sin, to repent. 
And if we don't, the day of condemnation will come and the punishment will come for not trusting in Him and repenting of our sins. And that really is the message tonight, guys. It's, it's addiction and pornography, but it's sin. And, and whether we have sin in our life we think is secret or whether we're fooling everybody, lying, cheating, stealing, pornography, drugs on the side, getting drunk and no one's around, God sees it. Anything we put before Him is idolatry. I, I encourage you to read Isaiah. <laughs> I love Isaiah in the book of John. I could speak on those the rest of my life because Isaiah showed me me. He's talking about Israel, but I was seeing Ricky Jones in every line. You get to the book of John, I see the mercy and grace for Ricky Jones in every line. Every line. And if he can do it for someone who lived like I did, Believe me, brothers, he loves you just the same. Right. And that's just it. I'm not. So, you know, if everybody will just bow their heads. Just close your eyes, just bow your head. If, if someone has something in their life that they need to repent of, you don't need to say it, you don't need to do anything. I just want you to turn it over to God right now. Just ask him to cleanse your heart like King David did. Simple prayer. God doesn't need the sacrifices. He doesn't need fireworks. He doesn't need yelling. He, doesn't, he just needs a humble heart to say, God, I have sinned. Please forgive me. Please. Restore me through your Son, Jesus Christ, back to you. And let me walk in your peace, your mercy, and your grace. And let me be the light that Christ Jesus and your Holy Spirit shines through. So, just if you have something, let's just take a minute and you just talk to God and Amen and amen. You know, brother, there's nothing like coming together with brothers in the Lord. There's nothing like it. Pastor Thomas is my dear friend. I can talk to him, Pastor Steve, about anything. I mean, they know my life. They know everything going on in it. I have accountability. If you have any issues of addiction, pornography, anything, I, I highly recommend just getting old Pastor Thomas. Meet him on the side. No one has to know. It will be safe. And have accountability. You know, just have accountability in our lives. There's two things with accountability. One, we get to speak our sin. We get to speak our sin to someone else. The Bible encourages us to do that in a safe place with someone you can trust. And there's restoration in that. Uh, if I ever come back, I, I, and I'll sometime... I'm a firm believer on the armor of God. And as a deputy sheriff, I was on the riot detail team um, in counterterrorism. They gave us equipment, right? Just like the Holy Spirit. Homo salvation, breastplate, gird yourself, choose a gospel of peace, shield of faith, sword of spirit, right? They're not just here you go. As a warrior, everything they gave me, I trained with. I fasted and prayed. I got on my knees and hold myself before God. I studied the word. I used the word to stand against sin, to stand against evil. These are gifts, but you have to know how to use them. And you have to discipline yourself to use them. I remember when they gave me a right helmet, they said, this thing will take a baseball bat. I went home, took a baseball bat, cracked it, it broke. I took it back and said, it's defective. They go, what are you doing? I said, you said it would stop a bat. That did not stop a bat. I said, I want another one. I took it home, boom, hit it with a bat, broke it. I took it back. Third one, I took it home and didn't break. I took it, I said, I need a new one. They go, it's not broke. I said, but it's compromised now. 
Don't compromise yourself, guys. Don't compromise the armor of God. Don't compromise the word of God. Count on it. Trust God. The things of the Spirit have more power, more authority than anything of this earth. We don't wrestle with powers and principalities, and that's the thing. Jesus defeated Satan. He could have done so many things. He defeated him with the Word of God when he tempted him. I mean, if, if I was fasted 40 days and 40 nights, someone offered me a cheeseburger, you know. But Jesus, what did he use? He didn't use his heavenly authority. He used the gospel of God. That's what we have to stand on. Read this, gentlemen. Know this. Teach it. Speak it. Pray it. But see yourself in there. Don't look at Israel. Look at yourself. It changed my life. And every time I read it now, I look at it and I go, you know what, God? <coughs> Cleanse me. Purify my heart. Help me speak blessings instead of cursing. <coughs> Give me the money to buy the cases of water. Give me the money to feed them. Give me the time to go to the prisons. Open the doors for me. Let me go to the, the military base. Let me go to the police and fire stations. Not one door has been shut on me. Not one. Not because of me. I'm a redeemed sinner. But the Holy Spirit went before me and opened up doors. He'll do the same thing for you guys. You can defeat the enemy. You can have no secrets from God. You can't. So just confess and live. Right? It's pretty cool. Life's good without the burdens and the pain. It really is. All right. Well, God bless you guys. Thank you for your time and listening.